Namo Bhutai. This is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 78. This is with Ugahamana Samana Mundika and it is also known as the Samana Mundika Sutta. It is MN78. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read it at your end to get the insights. Now this basically, uh, the context here is that there is this wanderer Umang Ugamaha, Ugahamana, uh, who is there and uh, who was residing around the Anandapithika monastery and there was a master builder Panchakanga who, who went up to wander Ugamana and uh, he discussed with him. So Ugamana said that uh, householder, individuals with four qualities uh, when they have, I call them an invincible ascetic. What four qualities? is when they do, don't do bad deeds with the body, they speak no bad words, they think no bad thought, and they don't earn a living by bad livelihood. So Panjagana did not say anything to him. He said, I will check check this with the Buddha. He just thought to himself. And then Panjagana went to the Buddha and said that uh, the uh, Uggahamana is saying this uh, four qualities uh, of. Then Buddha, Buddha said, Master Builder, what if, what if, if what the Uggahamana is saying is true, then a little baby boy is an invincible ascetic, right? Why? Because an invin a b little baby boy doesn't have a concept of body, so it cannot hurt anyone. It can just at the most wriggle, right? Then a little, boy, a little baby boy doesn't have the concept of speech, so how can they have bad words? Little baby boy doesn't have a concept of thought, so how can he think bad thoughts? Little baby boy doesn't have a concept of livelihood, so how could they possibly earn a living by bad livelihood? So, if you go by what Ugamana said, then a little baby boy is an invincible ascetic, right? Uh, so, so Buddha basically refuted Ugamana's doctrine there and there, right? So, uh, Buddha said that if the person has these four qualities, I describe them not as an invincible ascetic, uh, 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 but as having achieved the same level as a little baby, right? <laughs> so, that person is as of the same level of that of a little baby, right? Okay, now, now what this is, when an individual has 10 qualities, master builder, I describe them as an invincible ascetic, right? But first, before talking about the uh, the 10 qualities, I will t t talk to you ab about certain things, what are skillful, what are unskillful, right? And then I will come to the 10 qualities. So Buddha basically uh, said that as a, like, a, to, to, to attain those qualities, 10 qualities, there has to be some preparatory work to be done. So Buddha so talks about that and then Buddha says that uh, uh, certain things must first be understood first is Buddha says unskillful behaviors unskillful behaviors is what is unskillful behavior what does an unskillful behavior stem from how does the unskillful behavior cease without anything left over right so that one needs to be understood then what is skillful behavior what is skillful behavior what does it stem from how skillful behavior sees without anything left over. Then similar for thoughts, unskillful thoughts, skillful thoughts. Now Buddha started to explain. What are unskillful behaviors? Unskillful deeds by way of body, speech, bad livelihood. Right? Three ways. What are unskillful deeds? Unskillful behaviors? Unskillful deeds. That means unskillful actions by the body through body, speech and having a wrong livelihood. Now see all these things are covered in the Noble Eightfold Path. Right? All these things, what is covered here, these are all coming in the Noble Eightfold Path. So that's why all these discourses go back to the Noble Eightfold Path. They help us basically just to get a, a different kind of context to the noble, understanding the Noble Eightfold Path better. Right? So Buddha says these are the three unskillful behaviors. Now, where does the unskillful behavior stem from? They stem from the mind. So all the actions that we do, they stem from the mind. That's why, friends, it is important that our in our minds, we should change our thought process consciously. That means not thinking, desisting from thinking about the naturally the, the cruel thoughts and the hatred thoughts and moving towards thinking more compassionate thoughts about everyone. If this change can is, is made here, then the, automatically the actions would flow, positive actions will flow. That's what Buddha said in Dhammapada also, that happiness, sorrow, uh, happiness follows a you know person like a uh, you know a wheel follows a ox 
right? Happiness for same way happiness follows the person like a you know shadow of a person, right? So wherever you have a happy mind, happy actions, everything follows. Okay. So what does unskillful behavior stem from? Uh, by the mind. Then basically, it's Buddha is saying unskillful behavior stem from a mind that has three things. Buddha always said three core things from which all wrong behaviors stem. It's one is greed, second hatred, third is delusion. These three things, all the things, you know, stem. Then how do unskillful behaviors cease? There Buddha says, when you give up, that means you give up bad conduct by way of body, speech, mind and you develop good conduct by way of body, speech, mind, right? Give up wrong livelihood and start earning right livelihood. And then Buddha says, and how is someone practicing for the cessation of unskillful behaviors? Now, what's the practice? The practice Buddha said is right effort. That means generate enthusiasm, make an effort. Strive that the bad unskillful qualities don't arise, right? And strive that so basically there are what is right effort? Ensuring trying to have be mindful and ensuring that the bad qualities they don't arise, even if they have arisen, abandoning them, trying to generate skillful qualities, and if they've gen if they've been generated, and trying to elongate them. For example, you immediately mindfulness springs within view, try to elongate the mindfulness the mindful breathing as much as possible. First of all, try to generate mindfulness, compassion. At many times of the day, we can do these things. When you are just alone, you are just waiting for someone at a doctor's clinic or waiting for your, picking up your kids from school. Just generate compassion within you. Thoughts of compassion. Right? This is all what we have to do. And whenever thoughts of greed, hatred, all these things, things come, and which is minds, our natural tendency is to go in that direction. Try to kind of, you know, uh, move away from th those thoughts. Don't give them more energy to those thoughts. Right? Okay. Now, coming to skillful behaviors. Again, Buddha says here, skillful deeds by way of body speech. It's like a re kind of a reverse of the uh, earlier thing. So, skillful behaviors, how they arise and everything. Right? Then, B Buddha comes to... Thoughts, unskillful thoughts. What are the unskillful thoughts? Sensuality, malice and cruelty. Thoughts of sensuality, malice and of cruelty. These are the unskillful thoughts. And how does this unskillful thought stem from? It's basically from the perception. But what is perception? What perception? It takes many forms. Perceptions of sensuality, malice and cruelty. Unskillful thoughts stem from this. Right? This I need to delve deep myself between you know what is a perception of sensuality to a thought of sensuality how the flow happens what is the distinction i'm from whatever i can read i can share please do reading of your at your own end and you will get your own insights okay and now how to seize these unskillful thoughts is basically where the mind enters and remains in the first absorption that means when we practice our meditation as per in line what buddha what with what buddha taught in the middle discourses 10 we put our mindfulness to any of the objects like b body, breathing, or feelings, or uh, mind, or state of the mind, or the principles of dham dhammas. So we do our mindfulness meditation and reach the first absorption, right? And and this is where these unskillful thoughts cease, right? Without anything left over. And how is somebody, someone practicing for the cessation of skillful thoughts, right? Uh, it's when a medical, so again, this is the right effort thing that is coming up. What are the skillful thoughts? Thoughts of renunciation, goodwill. Renunciation, renunciation, leaving everything. In the mind, even though we are living in a lay life, but in the mind we renounce. Renounce everything, not have attachments. Goodwill, thoughts of goodwill, right? Loving kindness, goodwill, and harmlessness. These are called skillful thoughts. And where does these skillful thoughts stem from? Perception. Again, perception of renunciation, goodwill, harmlessness. And how does, where does these skillful thoughts cease without, again, it's the second absorption. Buddha says, when second absorption, even these thoughts get stilled. Okay, then Buddha says, now Buddha comes to the ten qualities that, that make a person. So, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the earlier ascetic, he said four qualities, which Buddha said, 
uh, is like a little baby has even those four qualities that little baby can be also an ascetic buddha says real is the 10 qualities now the what are the 10 qualities buddha says it's when medicate has right view right this is the noble eightfold path right right view right thought right speech right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness right immersion right knowledge right freedom two more right knowledge right freedom when an individual has these 10 qualities i describe him as an invincible ascetic accomplished in the skillful excelling in the skillful attained in the highest attainment this is what buddha said that is fine pan pan panchakanga the master builder was happy with what buddha, buddha said right so this is where we get some clarity on what is the right right kind of a, uh, attainment that we need to you know develop within ourselves how to let go of the uh, unskillful thoughts how to develop the skillful thoughts right so i hope this video was useful in some way gave you some kind of a useful insight do read the discourse and do share your insights in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya